Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today I'm going to be working on a very big saltwater reel. It's the Quantum Trophy. It's the QT60 single ball bearing reel made for surf casting, made for salt water, made for deep lake environments like the Great Lakes. Very big leveraged handle on it. Nice smooth reel for a single ball bearing. Problem is we don't have an anti-reverse. So we're going to show you how to take this apart and service this reel if you have this reel. And uh, if you have an anti-reverse problem, we'll stay around for that too because we're going to try and fix that. And uh, we'll see what we can do to get this reel out there fishing again. So I start by taking off the exterior pieces and parts. In this case, I'm starting with the spool. We'll show you how to service this spool and the drag system in a little while. But uh, for now, we're going to try and get underneath this thing, find out what's going on with that anti-reverse. Next up then, I'm going to remove the handle. And as I take the exterior pieces and parts off, I want to thank our first responders and essential personnel, all the uniform services, all the folks in medical, and all of the folks that are doing the, the delivery services and transit and making sure everything runs and that we stay safe while it is running uh, during the pandemic. I really do appreciate everything you're doing, the tireless hours you put in, and your commitment to task. Thank you for what it is. All right, we're going to take the four side plate screws out. As I do this, I want to put these down on the table. I want to make sure that all of the screws are the same size. It's not uncommon at all that these screws have uh, different lengths to them. Maybe not on this reel, but on many reels, there's always one or two that have a different head side, a different thread, a different uh, length, all kinds of things. And you want to make sure that you notice which ones go where if that's a problem. All right, we can take this one off. That'll give us a little bit of a clue in terms of what we're working for. This anti-reverse switch, even though the anti-reverse isn't working, can get in the way when you're removing the cover. So put it over to the other side. That's easy enough to do. And in this case, I didn't need to remove the rotor. I paid attention when I was looking at it to notice that the case ends here. And if that's the case, you can just take that off. If you look there and there's no uh, separation, that the, rotor, that the side case comes up under the rotor, then you need to remove the click ratchet and the spool shim, and then remove the rotor before you can get the side case off. This one is straightforward. We have some kind of a plastic case here. Very clean inside. It makes me wonder just how much this reel was really used, but uh, pretty much a traditional setup we have crosswind block, we have a big crosswind gear, we have a main gear, we have a pinion gear. So there's not a lot going on in this reel uh, that hasn't been done before in terms of technology. And uh, we want to get the axle shaft off first so that we can remove the, uh, the rotor and see what's going on with the anti-reverse. My guess is this is an old style uh, dog anti-reverse, not the uh, not the current instant anti-reverses that you would see. And they do that to save money. You don't need to have an anti-reverse clutch if you want to operate it with a dog and spring. And uh, it saves you money. And on a reel that has a single ball burring, uh, like this reel, uh, they're generally looking to save money. This is a good place to tell you to take pictures along the way. Notice the orientations of the pieces and parts, where they came from and uh, help yourself with the uh, uh, reassembly of that if you can't get the schematic diagram for this. That's my crosswind block that's going into the parts tray. Here's the main gear. That should simply pull out. The main gear has got a, uh, a plastic or a rubber bushing around it. Just want to remove that going into the case. And as I mentioned, it looks like this reel has sat for a while because you have an accumulation of grease on this side. So maybe it was hanging in the rafters on a pole or something, but uh, all of the, the grease eventually melted down to the bottom of the gear. And uh, when you go to clean it, just make sure that you take that off. All right, one more piece here, which is the crosswind gear. I always have some trouble getting that off, so I use, generally will use the pliers to just pull it up. All right, and just the rest is molded into the case there. So now we can come up top and we can go to work for the um, removal of the rotor and see what's going on with that anti-reverse. So we're going to remove the hold down screw. There's a little clip. 
It's a good place to take a picture so that you know how that clip goes. Well, trust your memory, as simple as some of these things seem. I, I don't know if there's a, uh, a problem if you flip that upside down, but uh, best to, to take the pictures along the way so that you can uh, know. All right. We need a deep ratchet for this because we have a big lip on the, the piece. I always keep my ratchets nearby. And let's see, this should come off. Nope. So I always test to see if this comes off in a traditional manner, which would be counterclockwise. In this case, I did that and it was tightening it. So you want to turn it in the opposite manner. And I generally like to take them off with my fingers after I can get that, uh, that nut turning free. All right, let's go find out what's going on under here then. So we have a, a uh, traditional setup here. We have the, the dog. We have a spring that's going to control the eccentric. In this case, we have the override on. And we should be able to turn this and have the dog pull back in. Well, in this case, that's not happening. So there's either one of two things. Either the spring mechanism is bad or the dog is stuck. So we're going to pull that spring mechanism up and we're going to test that dog. And that dog just doesn't want to move. So we're going to do the first thing is loosen it up with some penetrating oil. Hit that on both sides. And we're going to just back this off a little bit. We don't need to go much. I mean, an eighth of a turn. And I'm going to take this off because there's something going on in here. And that's why this anti-reverse isn't working. It's, it's too tight. So my guess is there's some grease or lack of grease or something else. To take the dog off, we're going to pull that. I'm going to take both of these pieces and put them into my tray. I'm going to pull up on this to get this dog off. Yeah, it looks like we have some stuck grease or something in there. So I'm just going to do a little bit of a mop up here. Clean that up, clean the other side up inside. And while I have the dog out, I'm going to pull the bearing and we'll do the service on that. So when you're, when you're doing a real service, it's only going to take you 20, 25 minutes on a reel like this. Maybe a little bit longer if you have to go back and rewind my video or something. But when you do the service, don't skip any steps. It's just just a couple of minutes, and it's not worth saving a, a couple of minutes for uh, not doing the job proper. So there's some old creases in there. I want to get that out of there. I'm going to remove the bearing. Dried grease is there as well. So first up, we'll just use that penetrating oil as a cleaner or degreaser. While I'm doing that, I'm going to wipe down the pinion gear. And then I use a soft brush. You can use a toothbrush or anything just to clear the channels of that pinion gear. Get all that old grease out. And I like to wipe it onto a paper towel. Pull it towards you, wipe it onto the paper towel, and that way you, uh, you can get any dirty grease that's trapped in this gear uh, off of the brush so that you don't spread it back on the next time you go to, to uh, clear that channel. All right, I'm going to give it a good dose of grease because this one hasn't had the grease. And I would say this is a victim of sitting for as long as it's sat. You can see that there is evidence that it's sat because of the way that the, the grease ran down on that main gear. And my guess would be that, uh, that whatever grease was underneath the, uh, the dog there just dried and became like a glue. All right, this is spinning nicely. I'm going to put some fishing reel oil on that. I use Real X oil. And uh, I use several different types of oils. In this case, I'm using Real X. Go ahead and put that burring back on. Reseat that in the case. That's why the, these two little screws are just sitting here while I was cleaning up the uh, that anti-reverse dog. Now, my only hope here is that the uh, that plastic post didn't swell. Because if it's, if it's a swollen post, there's nothing you can do with that dog. I guess you could ream out the, uh, the inner hole maybe to make it slide a little bit easier. But I'm just hoping that the, the little gap from the two of those uh, was filled with some grease or something that was causing that. All right, the two of these go in. 
So if you like these kinds of videos, I would ask you to subscribe to my channel. And if you do subscribe to my channel, uh, please uh, hit the notification button. I work on all kinds of reels. In this case, we just have one that the customer brought in, but uh, it's a saltwater uh, casting reel. Uh, perfect for uh, beaches and the like, but uh, I work on everything. Uh, trolling reels, bait casters, fresh water, all kinds and the like. All right, here's a good thing to note. I didn't uh, play around with this override, but there's a spring hiding back here. If you've lost the spring, and it looks sort of like an up and down hill, that's where it belongs. It keeps tension on this post. And as you turn it, you'll see that spring will compress against the post. It'll, well, you can't see very well on this, but there is a movement here in and out on the lower post with that spring. All right, let's put this back on and let's see if we've got any more movement in this. Well, that's, that's the way it should work. Just a nice, easy flow to it. So we're going to take that for, take that to mean that the, uh, the issue was on some of that little grease that was dry there. I'm going to go ahead and grab the screw. We're going to put that back in next. So this is where if you were taking pictures and you kind of got confused which screw was it, for example, because this is an awful big screw. It doesn't look like it would really belong there, but it does. Uh, but if you took pictures, you'd say, oh, that's where it went. You might be looking for a smaller screw in your, in your uh, kit or something. And I'm just doing this to make sure. And now that's kind of the, the start of the test of this. We want to take that, that spring-driven eccentric. There's plenty of tension on that, so that wasn't the cause. We can put a little uh, oil onto the, uh, the shaft here. And, oh, that's got plenty of oil on it. And uh, let's go ahead and put this on. Now this little uh, hole here belongs on that pin of the anti-reverse. So first thing you need to do is line this up with the square shoulders on the... It's going to go this way. The washer goes on first. So we're going to line that up. We're going to insert it to make sure it's over. And now we can give it a test. And now we see that it's moving in and out. So that's your, that's your anti-reverse fix there. So what we found as the issue to this particular cause was the um, post had a lot of dried grease on it. All right, noted that the collar went up. Now we have that little washer that goes both between that and the rotor. We can put the rotor on next. You want to check underneath here. There's a little bit of sand under here. Something I would say that it was probably appropriately used. While you do that, check to make sure your ramp is working on this. There's some dried grease underneath on that trip lever ramp, so we're going to get that out of there. I usually put a little bit of oil in there. I don't, uh, the greases aren't going to do much in there. It's just a bar that's sliding down, which brings me to the bales itself. If the bale is working, you don't need to do anything. Don't take it off. Just simply put a little bit of oil into each side arm's uh, joint where it meets the, uh, the rotor, and you can oil up the line guide, even though this one probably does not, well, wouldn't have a, a ball bearing because it's not advertised as a two ball bearing wheel, it's advertised as a single ball bearing wheel. So you do not have a ball bearing in that uh, rotor cup there. All right, put our rotor nut on next. Now with that rotor nut, remember we took it off in a clockwise, so it's going to go back in a counterclockwise. And I'm being told that people don't understand what counterclockwise means, so I turn it towards you. That's, uh, that's the way you want to get that on. And before you do much more, give it a spin. And if it's spinning nicely, well, it's time to move on to the next piece. We've already greased up the, uh, the uh, main gear, or the pinion gear. Notice you have two studs on this bearing bushing. It's a plastic bushing. There's a high point and then 180 degrees away there's another. There's offsets in the case here, one on each side. You need to put those into the offset, otherwise your reel is going to jam when you try to test it out. It'll be too tight because the bushing will be sitting proud. All right, 
We have uh, nice clean gear. I guess everything leaked out or evaporated on this one. So we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to grab our brush and a little bit of fishing reel grease. In this case, I use pen precision reel grease. I am not particular to any fishing reel grease, but I am particular to use fishing reel grease. Most manufacturers have their own uh, greases. That's fine. This is a Quantum. I think Quantum has the hot sauce, if I remember. I might be wrong. Get it on the fronts and backs, get it every place it's going to touch. This, this gear gets grease everywhere. Seat it over the stud, get some grease onto the face because that's where your cross wind block is going to ride. Get some inside the cross wind block. Now if this had dried grease in it, you certainly would be cleaning it off. If in this case it doesn't have the greases in it, so just take it as it is. All right. Next up then, I'll just wipe this brush down. Next up will be to put the main gear in. We've cleaned that main gear, so we've got to go back and grease this one up. We'll do the good thing. You don't have to get grease in every, every tooth. If you do, um, it's going to just spin. If you overload it with the grease, it's just going to do what it did before. It's all going to puddle inside. That puddling inside doesn't help anything. The uh, back teeth drive that oscillation gear, so make sure that all the teeth are there, they're not broken or chipped. You did the same thing on the front. And uh, you can go ahead and insert that in there. Next step then would be to bring the axle shaft. Install that. There's a flat side on the axle shaft that usually faces out as you go into that cross wind block. So come on up. Oops, before we do that, for some reason I always want to I'm going to miss this little tie down clip here. So let's get that done before we go any further. Let's see if you took pictures along the way, you knew that that clip was there. Line that up, grab your screw, tighten that down. That'll prevent that, that nut from spinning. Now we can get the axle shaft. Put the axle shaft, just a light coat of grease. Don't go crazy on it because it's going to just push off when you uh, go through the pinion gear here. All right, bring it down, flat side facing you. Find the little hole in that cross wind block. And it has to go in square, so make sure it goes in square. And there's a little flathead screw. Again, if you, if you didn't know that, you took pictures of it and you found that that's where the flathead screw came from. I've seen the wrong screws come in here. I've seen roundhead screws come in, and then the reel, when it gets to the top of the stroke, the round head that's protruding is hitting against the main gear. Not a good thing. The back side of this has the same notch in the case and the same studs on the bushing. Make sure that they're there. A little bit of grease onto the stud that's going to go to the inner side of that bushing. You don't need to oil or lube bushings. They're plastic. Or plastic is a general petrochemical product. It's uh, just going to do fine by itself. If you want to put some in there, that's fine. You don't need to. We know that the four screws are the same, so we're going to go ahead and do this. doesn't matter which hole you mark them for. As I uh, tighten this down, if you have questions on this reel or any reel in particular and you uh, you want to ask them, please leave it in the comments section. It doesn't have to be on this reel. Uh, maybe you're working on a reel and you're stuck. If I can help you, I'll try to answer those questions for you. That's the best way to reach me. I, I, I do have a business card that follows the videos. If you try calling, I'm going to apologize in advance because when I'm in the shop working on these, maybe doing a video, whatever it is, uh, I don't have time to answer the phone. So uh, the phones generally take a little while for me to call back, uh, but I can generally answer those um, comments, questions in the morning uh, while I'm, uh, well, before I get in the shop. There you go. All right, and then we put the handle on. You can, if you like, put a light coat of grease. This handle is going to go through the main gear and you could put a little bit of grease in there. Now that's not a moving part, but what that might do in the future is it might prevent uh, corrosion or 
build up or anything. I'm never sure what these these handles and metals are inside these. And if uh, if you don't know what it is and uh, you're using it in a salt water environment, by all means, a uh, little, little bit of uh, lubrication on there goes a long way. Sort of like the way that they used to lubricate uh, ammunition shells with uh, greases to keep them from rusting back in the day when uh, that's what they were made with. Let's go up top here and uh, take this out. We do notice that there is some dirt on here. So let's clean this up. This is your drag system. It's held in by a star spring. I'm going to put that in my parts tray. I don't like those, lose those springs. And we have felt washers in here. So the felt washers need to be kept uh, flexible and clean. They are not a weak weakness of a reel. A lot of people think, oh, it's a felt washer, it's got to be weak. That's not the case. Felt washers are fine. Penn uses them in their, the older Fierce lineup. Uh, the Fierce threes now have moved over to the, the Penn HD100s, but the ones before that, uh, they were felt washers. Shimano's use felt washers. It's not a problem, but if they dry out or if they're dirty, they will tear, and uh, then it becomes a problem. So if you're tearing them up, if you're if you're in a heavy drag kind of an environment where you're always using your drags, you might want to replace them with Carbon Tex washers or another type of an upgrade. First felt washer goes into the cavity. We have two round washers. They're called key. They go top and bottom, so one of those goes in the bottom. I'm going to do the same thing here. We're going to saturate that uh, felt washer with oil. Don't worry, the oil eventually will. Uh, dry up or uh, evaporate or whatever and uh, you'll have the right amount that's not going to affect the operation of the drag. The last one here, put that in, put the other keyed washer in, the middle washer with the two prongs on it is called an eared washer. Alright, so we're going to go back in with the star uh, pentagon. Pentagon. I'm just trying to get it into the, the slot. There you go. So there's a slot that these ride in. You just want to make sure that they're seated in there. There's no uh, no purpose to that other than to retain that drag stack. So you want to get it in uh, as best you can. There's a little bit of dust on the side here. Let's go ahead and use a cotton swab while we're at it just to get that uh, that dust off. Put this back on. Work that down. Grab your something didn't feel right there. Grab your drag adjuster knob. We'll give it a spin. We'll see if we have that anti-reverse. We'll see how the tune-up did with new fresh grease, and we'll move on. Well, Nice smooth reel, nice anti-reverse. Now this is not an infinite anti-reverse, but it has a lot of stops in it. Nice work. Let's just use the bail, make sure that the bail trips. The bail trips fine. So that's it. That's your Quantum Trophy uh, QT60 single ball bearing uh, large saltwater reel. And uh, this one's ready to go fishing again. We've solved the issue with the, uh, the faulty, faulty anti-reverse. And uh, I'm sure my customer will be happy that uh, he can go take this, take it out on the, the road again. All right, so I hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, please like it. If you want to see more, again, please subscribe. And again, if you're a first responder, thank you for everything it is that you do. The same thing for the essential personnel. Uh, and uh, please stay safe, stay well, and stay watching. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.